After almost two and a half years living on the road full time in my RV, here are five things I learned from full time RV living on the road. Number one, if you stay longer, it's generally cheaper. So you'll often, of course, always have the daily rate, which is the most expensive when you break it down by days. Some of them will have a weekly rate, which is, of course, broken down by day is a little bit cheaper. And then um, some of them have a monthly rate, which, of course, is cheaper. Now, I stayed in one in Arizona that actually had a yearly rate, which you had to pay it all up front, and it was by far uh, the absolute cheapest and an excellent deal. Number two, when you're going from city to city or small town to small town, in my experience, they do begin to look very similar. <laughs> yeah, you will have different buildings, different parks, of course, different restaurants or attractions, but they do tend to blend together. Now, I personally prioritize travel by nature. I like to see beautiful nature and weather, whether that's cooler weather or hotter weather. Of course, also I'll travel for a specific event or to visit somebody. By the way, I'm Pippi Peterson and I've learned a lot from my endeavors and adventures from full-time RV life on the road to living abroad to being a YouTube personality and having my own bookkeeping firm. Number three, in my experience, I found it to be tiring, which is to be expected, but also it was very hard to work and complete projects. I didn't like having to unpack and repack things at such a frequent rate. For example, like the grill. If I wanted to grill something, I'd have to take it out from under my RV. Then I'd have to clean it and put it back and uh, you know, do that every time I traveled or every time I wanted to use it. The biggest one was my work computer. So I don't know about you, <laughs> I'm sure there's some people that are pretty clean at the end of the day, but my work desk, I have papers out, notes out, and if for me to put those away, it's like for to take them back out, I kind of have to go through the whole mental process of it. So I generally have notes and agendas and papers on my desk because of that. So to have to put that away regularly and not be able to kind of rely on it out there and have it, you know, set in my head and, you know, be able to sort and organize, that was really disruptive. Number four, routine things take longer. For example, just going to the grocery store. You either have to plan in advance because you might not be near a grocery store, so you'll have to research where you're going to be. Is there going to be a grocery store near? Do you need to go to a particular store that you want to go to before you go to an area that doesn't have that? And the other thing about grocery stores is even if there is one in the area, now you gotta now you gotta find it. You gotta get out your GPS, and you know just all of that contributes to the disruption of work. So if you're retired, you know, less of a big deal, but um, it can be harder to do those routine things. And when those small routine things add up with extra time, it just creates a little bit more disruption in timing and schedules. And number five, living full time on the road in your RV is absolutely thrilling and exciting. It's definitely worth it but it is its own beast, it's its own experience, and it's a little harder to replace your day-to-day -day routines if you, if you rely on those routines. But totally worth it, an absolute once or maybe even never in a lifetime experience. Tell me in the comments what you learned about full-time RV living on the road and follow me for more pippinings.